Hey, hey, how you doing? Coach Kyle Brown here, celebrity fitness nutrition coach, founder of Fit365.com and creator of the Fit365 Shakes. Wanted to talk to you a little bit this morning, happy Monday on that note, about why you overeat and how you can stop it. So yesterday I was sitting here working, my son was over on the side of me and he goes, I'm hungry again. This is like an hour after eating. He goes, I'm hungry again. No, wait. I'm just thirsty. I need some water. And I just kind of looked and I was like, wow, this is perfect. This is exactly what we try to train them. And I wish that most people were more in tune with their senses and understood how to listen to their body better. We wouldn't have this obesity epidemic we have at all, let alone much of an overweight issue. Because as you know, you can't out-exercise a bad diet. So we eat on the average of three times a day, some people more, <laughs> yet for some reason we haven't really been able to figure out how to keep our portions in check. And we haven't been able to figure out how to only eat when we need to, only eat when we're hungry. And I want to break it down to you. There's four different reasons why or categories of reasons why. The first one is nutritional deficiencies. Then there's emotional unrest. There's energetic blockages and there's environmental inefficiencies and temptations. So let's break it down here. So let's talk first about the nutritional deficiencies. So the first nutritional deficiency that is really keeping people from eating the right amount of, uh, amount of food is fiber. So fiber is nature's set, uh, safety mechanism to keep you from overeating. And I've talked about this a few different times, uh, really letting people know that that's the reason why a zebra, for example, can eat 80% plus of the day and never get fat, is because that fiber in those grasses, boom, sets off that mechanism and says I'm full. Humans should be taking in about 35 plus grams of fiber a day, and a lot of people I notice when they start going either paleo or keto is they're incredibly fiber deficient. So really keep a good eye on your fiber intake and make sure that you bump it up to get into that 35 plus range. Uh, dietary fat deficiency, that's another big problem that I notice with people who are really kind of following a lot of these standard diets, is that they're not understanding that dietary fat is what leaves you satisfied. So they're eating this fluff processed food that doesn't have enough dietary fat in it, healthy dietary fat, to keep them satisfied. Uh, dehydration, that's probably the biggest reason why people struggle and overeat. Just like Braden figured out at three years old, wait a minute, I'm actually thirsty, not hungry, I gotta go drink some water. You want about an ounce for every pound of lean muscle mass, so you wanna be getting in a good gallon, gallon and a half a day, depending on your activity level, depending on uh, how warm the weather is outside. Here we're gonna have a hot one today in San Diego, you wanna be getting up around that gallon plus marker for most people, and most people are incredibly water deficient, and only 80% of people, or 80% of people don't have that message between the vagus nerve uh, to your brain to tell you the difference between full and thirsty, and it looks like Braden is uh, one of those, which is why he realized he was thirsty. Um, and then vitamin and mineral deficiencies, that's another problem that a lot of people have that uh, calcium or magnesium or zinc or B-complex, those are the four main ones that people are incredibly deficient in, that affect hunger, have a huge effect on hunger, and actually also have a huge effect on both sugar and chocolate cravings. Um, a good fix for this process is you can learn like uh, in Ayurvedic nutrition, when I studied Ayurvedic nutrition, we had to sit there and do 56 bites per chew, really learning how to get those digestive enzymes working in your mouth. So test yourself uh, sometime this week and say, all right, I'm gonna try just for one meal to do about 56 bites per chew where you liquefy your food in your mouth, absorb it, utilize it before it breaks down instead of just scarfing everything down. And when you have to actually sit there and count, you realize that, wow, I way overeat. Now you don't need to try to count 56 every time you eat, but just realize that you are way, way, way over consuming because you're eating too fast. The next thing, an emotional, uh, the energetic side, uh, stress. Stress is one of the biggest reasons why people overeat. Uh, they have these really um, high needs to fill a void. 
So you're stressed, you're anxious, you're overwhelmed, and you've learned this from a very early age, and it's totally ingrained into your subconscious, which is stuff down those emotions. And you don't have an outlet, so your outlet is eat, 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 eat that emotion. And uh, as you know, that never solves anything. Uh, so there's some sort of emotional unrest which is making you go trying to fill that void by overconsuming. Energetic blockages. Um, let's first focus on the solution for the emotional. So on the emotional side, you can do different things. Uh, you basically have static energy. And what you need is an outlet for that energy. One can be physical. So that can be walking, it can be sprinting, it can be boxing. Having some outlet to transfer that stress energy so it doesn't end up in food, which is when do you think people most overconsume? They overconsume in the evenings when they're highly stressed out. You're highly stressed out throughout the day, but you sit back and you pop on the TV and you're sitting on that couch, and then that's when the food's coming in because your brain isn't racing around thinking about all the work, and all of a sudden you're trying to fill that void with food. Uh, so getting some sort of movement going can really, really help. Or you can do an energetic uh, thing. You could have an energetic blockage. Um, something like meditation or breath work or EFT tapping, acupuncture, anything that can get that chi going throughout your body uh, is huge. So many times that is one of the biggest reasons why people are over consuming is because they have the energetic block. And then uh, the last thing that you're going to want to look at is your environmental inefficiencies and temptations. So this can be a few different things. This could be big serving size. And I read a really interesting study yesterday about popcorn, where they went and they had people try this popcorn that tasted like styrofoam. It was a three out of 10 was the way people rated it. And they gave it to them in movie theaters. And if they gave them a bigger bag of popcorn in the movie theater, they would consume 35% more. And this is popcorn that they even said tasted like styrofoam. And they still over consumed it because the delivery mechanism was bigger. So it's the same thing as the bigger plate study. It doesn't matter about just plates. It even goes for bags like popcorn. Um, too much food within your proximity. If you don't look at sugar as a drug, you won't be able to learn how to combat it the same way as other people have been successful with other drugs, right? You wouldn't put an alcoholic working in a bar. Yet you're in your office space and you've got these candies sitting on your desk and you're just looking at them saying, I'm really good, I'm not gonna have any. It's a joke. Put yourself in an environment that breeds success, not temptation. Uh, eating too fast, which we talked about, and letting yourself get too hungry before you eat next. As you know, uh, they say never go grocery shopping hungry. It's the same kind of concept. Really watch that out. So I hope this helps. Uh, one thing that I want you to think about, if you want to just imply something, one thing today, is breathe and relax before you eat and put your fork down in between bites. If you can actually do those two things, you'll be blown away by the difference. I hope this helps.